Hey, 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 Fit Mama, Jen Oliver here, your host of the Fit Mama podcast. This is the work in to your workout. Hello and welcome to this episode. We have some very special guests on today and I am so excited to introduce them to you. Fit Mama, if you have not already followed or found these two women online, their names are Megan and Alex and they make up the dynamic duo that is known online as Zesty Ginger. It's just so cute. I absolutely love these two. And I actually found them through my sister who had told me that they were on a different podcast and I listened to them and I absolutely knew I had to reach out and introduce them to you, Fit Mama. So I am so excited to have them on here today. These two women have such a wealth of knowledge. Respectively, they have two incredible degrees. Megan, who is the redhead the ginger part of the group, which you will see if you see them online uh, or if you follow them at zesty underscore ginger, you will find them. And Megan is the one who is a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. And Alex on the right in their picture online is an MD. So these two are absolutely incredible. And they are what I really love about them is that they are all about syncing with your cycle. They talk a lot about hormones. They talk a lot about how to be in touch with what's really going on in your body. So they have one of the most incredible resources that I've ever seen for this, which is their wild feminine cycle guide. So it allows you to actually do some things that they share in their guide, which can be downloaded on their site, which I will share in the show notes. And these are simple things that you can do every day. They have suggestions for detox. They have suggestions for little elixirs that have things such as, oh, what's in them? Chlorophyll, um, They also have collagen in them, which I've been taking for about a year now and absolutely love. Uh, They also have milk thistle, which is known to help detox and support the liver. They have turmeric tincture. And, you know, the thing about this is that there are so many supplements and so many things out there that we could do, and it seems a little overwhelming. And what they've done with their free guide that you can find on their site is that you can have little things that you can do that match up with the week of your cycle. So if you're in week one or if you're in week three, you're taking different things, you're doing different things. So it's not going to give you that overwhelm. It's just going to allow you to do a little things at the time when you need them. So without further ado, I am going to have them on here. And then at the end, I'm going to share a little bit more about what they are up to and how you can be in touch with them. So here we go with the incredible pair, Zesty Ginger, Megan and Alex. Hey, and welcome to this episode with the Zesty Ginger Women. I am so excited to have these two, Megan and Alex, on the podcast with us. Because as we talk about the work in to your workout, these two women have really, really, really gone deep in, in terms of the cycle, as I mentioned earlier. So I am so excited to have these two on and they are going to introduce themselves, starting with their why, why they got into this, why they're passionate about doing what they do, because they are two very unique women with a very, very passionate mission. And I am so, so grateful to have them. So we're going to start here with Megan. Megan is the zesty ginger one. She's the redhead of the two. If you see them in photographs or videos, and if you haven't followed them on social media, you can click that in, in the show notes to follow them because they are very fun and they have so many good tips. So Megan, tell us about yourself and your why. Hi, yes. Thank you so much for having us, Jen. So my why goes back to, uh, of course, my personal experience. So my why is all about helping women not feel like they're alone 
and like they're overwhelmed and like they're crazy. Like they've been told <laughs> that they are totally fine. You know, all their traditional blood, blood work says they're fine. Doctor says they're fine, but they don't feel right because that was me. So our whole goal is to help people know that there can be underlying imbalances even when this is the case and that there is a process to get out of this craziness because after having my uh, first child, I fell off the hormonal cliff and was in a deep, dark place that I thought was normal and it really wasn't. So our goal is to help women understand that this is not normal. There are things you could do and community is key. So we just try to bring people together in that community. Wow. I love that. And I also love this reference of the hormonal cliff. What do you mean by that? I love it. I know I made that up because <laughs> I do really feel like that's what it felt like. I never really had per se, you know, specific health problems. I had never dealt with anxiety. I had pretty regular periods like leading up until having a child. I just didn't have that many things I even went to a doctor for. And then I had a baby and it was just like, <laughs> I think the perfect storm. Mm -hmm. I had just run a marathon before I got pregnant with her and mm -hmm. um, had done my fair share of, you know, starvation diets and had just kind of put my, my body in a place where that having the baby and then the, you know, sleepless nights and what comes with that, the physical changes and then the actual mental, emotional changes of having a baby. I just literally, all my hormones dropped off. So, I mean, I know that because I, we use functional lab work and I eventually tested them, which is how mm -hmm. I came to understand what was going on. But I just really had a drop off of all levels. And with that, drop off of all energy, anxiety came in, fears, all tons of irrational fears about me and my child, um, just depression. So mm -hmm. that's kind of the cliff mm -hmm. that I'm referring to. <laughs> wow. Well, we'll definitely dive more into that because I know there are many fit mamas out there who have struggled with that, who have felt that to some degree. And I know that through the functional lab work that you do, you know the exact numbers, but people even without knowing the numbers go, oh, yeah, been to that movie, right? They know that is exactly. something I know very well. So we will definitely dive into that. Thank you for sharing. And now moving on to Alex. Alex, I am so excited to hear from you, your why, and let's hear it. <laughs> yeah. Hi there. Um, yeah. So my why is very similar to Megan's and I think that's why we work so well together um, and why we're such good friends but um, my why is the fact that um, it, within the struggle of being alone and being misunderstood and feeling like you're getting blown off within the medical community I just feel like it should be easier <laughs> to be a woman and understand your body than it is for so many people. Like we're just never taught this stuff. And so we're so out of touch and fearful with our, with our bodies and what they do. And it's always just this struggle, struggle, struggle. And what Megan and I have done is really tried to bring it back to like, you know, we want to keep the science and we love the medicine. We love the functional lab work. Like that's a huge part of what we believe in, mm -hmm. but we always want to bring it back to just like the basics of actually living inside your body and being more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And that's been, you know, I always kind of think of what we do as an extension of my own experiences. I think just like everyone does. And, um, my experiences with, um, health started kind of like Megan's, um, as a pretty healthy kid growing up. Um, and then right when I went off to college, um, things just clicked for me in a really horrible way. And that I started having really bad, uh, pelvic pain mm. and, um, it wasn't until, uh, 11 years later that I was finally diagnosed with endometriosis that I just um, destroyed most of my like ovaries and all of my pelvic organs ended up being stuck together mm -hmm. um, but at the time like all of those years was kind of my transformation from being like oh I 
want an ant, like I have so much pain with everything, you know, and then the pain um, generalized as pain um, tends to do to the central nervous uh, system disease. And um, then I think because of that, my hormones also just went sideways and with endometriosis and like Megan said, it was just the perfect storm of events that basically from age 18 to about 23, I'd say, was just me guessing, <laughs> which mm. is why we always talk about our tests, don't mm. guess with the functional yeah. lab work, right. um, because I did so much more damage to my body because like no one ever really took me seriously. They'd be like, Oh yeah. Pain. Uh, here's some ibuprofen. Um, yeah. And, and so I was just like on forums, um, back when there wasn't even like Google, I feel like Mm. (laughs) where everyone was just like, Oh my gosh, I'm in so much pain and no one can help me. And there was just like, try this herb, try this diet. And I just threw everything at it. Mm. And it was, just truly a miserable process. Yeah. And then, um, kind of as I got to medical school, um, I had gone from being, I went to college as a piano major. Um, and wow. then in the process of having pain, I was, and not really ever feeling hurt. I was like, I, I can do better than this. And, um, I decided to make the switch to go to medical school instead. Wow. Um, oh, and that's then a leap. by the time I wow. got to medical school, I started being like, huh, there's, something going on here that that there's more to the story so I started going to like more specialist and um with you know after a little bit more time um I was just I was diagnosed with low ovarian reserve um ended up doing a couple of rounds of IVF um which didn't end up being successful but it, it was okay, um, you know, at this point, um, and we've just taken a little break from that. Um, and so in that process, it's always just been like, since age 18, everything wow. like female related was just like such a struggle all the time. Mm-hmm. And just as Megan and I worked, we just realized like, it, it's just gotta be easier than this to do it. And, um, once we started getting into that mindset and it was a lot of like mental work that we did together and separately. Um, and that's kind of how the whole cycle, um, concept was born for us. And, um, that's, I think a large part of my why and why I do it. But, um, ultimately, um, I am going to be a chronic pain doctor, so mm. I will, I've finally gotten here like 12 years later. Wow. Um, so I'll be doing a fellowship for chronic pain and then hopefully working as a chronic pain doctor for the next foreseeable future. Wow. Well, congratulations. That's a lot of effort and definitely a big switch from going as a piano major into medical yeah. school. So I love that story. That's super cool. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, it, it really does show and highlight how important our own journey is in what we do with our lives. And you now, with that fire under you in your why to help others not struggle in the ways that you have, it's really empowering. And it's beautiful to see you go on that journey and help so many people along the process, both of you. So thank you for all that you do. And thank you for being here. And now I want to kind of jump into, for Megan, these anxieties and fears that you were feeling. And I want to talk about the hormones related to this, because I know there are many fit mamas who are listening to this right now, and whether they're at home with their kids, or their kids are growing up or grown up, there are very real fears and anxieties. And then there are the ones that appear real and happen at certain times and different phases in our lives. So Megan, maybe you can speak to that after having been there and gone off this hormonal cliff, so to speak. And, you know, what you really learned through these great challenges to lead to the breakthrough that you've had. Sure. Absolutely. Jen, I love that you bring up the situational, you know, there's situational stressors. We're, we're doing all focusing a lot on stress series right now. And there's always going to be, you know, situational stressors or things that come up in life, right? It's just not Mm -hmm. all going to be unicorns and fairies, of course. So we ideally want to have this really super strong adaptive reserve. Like we want to have this buildup so that when the stress hits, 
or when you have that baby or when you go through the traumatic incident or death in the family, you, um, you're, you're still going to lose a little bit of full function, but you don't get to the, to the, what I call symptom land, right? Mm-hmm. So we can lose, you know, up to 20 to 30% of everything working, functionally amazing in the body and still not have hit symptoms because our bodies are so amazing and they keep us out of symptom land as long as possible. But what happens in the process of keeping it, keeping everything in homeostasis and keeping everything stable is that we literally start stealing nutrients and things from places all over in the body that's not really ideal for the long term, but it's good to kind of get you through that current stressor. Mm-hmm. And same thing with the babies. You know, I, I work with pregnant women, um, not a ton, but because, you know, I've been in a holistic way and they'll be so scared about the health of their baby. And I just say, look, that baby's going to take everything it needs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to leave you totally depleted, <laughs> but don't worry about the baby, right? Mm-hmm. So the baby takes what it needs and same thing happens just with general stresses. But what I found was I was having these anxieties and these feelings and these fears and these thoughts, which I think often we like to, when it's a thought, we tend to blame ourselves that that's just in our head and we shouldn't be having that thought. Mm. And that blaming and that shame and that thought process then provides a lot more stress. Our cortisol, our stress hormone is going to go up in response to that because not only are you having a fear or a thought, but now you think that's your fault and that's a really tough cycle to get into. That's especially hard with our ladies with anxiety. Thank anxiety you. is just like the, yeah. the opposite, exact opposite of the contentment. And mm-hmm. so the cool thing about why we love functional lab work is that when we work with ladies um, postpartum, we usually say after six months or, or six months or beyond, you can look at your numbers. For example, you can look at your estrogen to progesterone ratio. You can look at your neurotransmitters, your serotonin to dopamine ratio. And you can look at your adrenaline and your noradrenaline. And these numbers, there's certain ratios like that were seen when I finally tested mine, that it was like, well, no wonder you're having these crazy thoughts and anxiety. I mean, my Um, serotonin and dopamine were exactly the opposite. They were flipped from the way you want them to be. So my serotonin was really low and dopamine was higher in relationship to it. Mm. And serotonin is, is the happiness, happiness neurotransmitter known as, but it's really like contentment. It's really overall happiness. Whereas dopamine is, um, more reward pathway. That's Mm -hmm. like, I feel good right now. Mm -hmm. And what happened with me is after things are so imbalanced, then you're really craving to hit that dopamine pathway. So you reach for anything. I started reaching for more and more caffeine, more and more of my phone, social media, um, shopping, things that kind of hit that, you know, some people will reach for um, drugs or alcohol or or caffeine, but whatever can kind of hit that dopamine pathway, you crave it and then you build up a little bit of tolerance. You need more and more and more and more. Mm-hmm. So for me, when we, when I finally saw these numbers on paper, I was like, Oh, this is not just in my head. You know, I'm doing air quotes with my fingers that you can't <laughs> see, but it's just not in my head. Yeah. It was such a relief to know that you could help balance your chemistry, your, you know, there was a biochemical imbalance and you could help bring that back. And then you could help get your thought process into a healthier place. And then you would kind of have the energy and the means to dig into some deeper things like, okay, I really need to get my sleep on track. I really need to um, be moving, not too much, not too little. I need to get my water consumption up. I need to be getting good nutrients. But until you can kind of get in that good headspace, it's really hard. And if you're dealing with no sleep and fatigue and you're just craving carbs and you're just craving sugar, it's really hard to fight that cycle. Yes, absolutely. And that is real. And especially when you're having that that anxiety, right? So you're kept in that place of feeling the shame or feeling like something's wrong or you are wrong, right? Right. Yeah. So what is... 
significant mental piece to it. Yeah. Sure. And what is one thing, just one thing that you would recommend if you could go back or you could talk to your younger self in that moment? What is one thing you'd recommend to someone if they're feeling that cycle and it's like, oh, yeah, I'd love to get my sleep and my movement and all that on track. That sounds great, but I can't even get out of bed or I'm so exhausted and can't function or whatever the case is. What would your first suggestion be? Looking back now, I'd say my first suggestion is to attempt to get out of that fight or flight chronic stress mode. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How? And what does my that entail? favorite tool that I, I've learned now, I mean, this is so simple, but I say learned, I actually use now. I knew it back then, but I didn't use it, mm. is um, deep breathing. Mm. So breathing in, um, I do about five seconds in, second, seven seconds out. Um, having your out breath be longer than your in breath will trigger that parasympathetic state. And parasympathetic is that rest and digest, the opposite of fight or flight. Beautiful. Anything that can trigger that, that state in the physical body, your brain is then um, reading the physical body. So I think a lot of times we think that it's top down that our brain is telling our, our body how to feel. You're like, oh, I'm feeling very anxious physically in my body. It must be my, my brain must be telling my body to feel that way. Mm -hmm. But really 90% of the time it's the other way around. Your brain is reading your physical state. It's reading uh, your blood pressure, the pH in the blood. It's reading all your hormones and neurotransmitters saying, am I safe mm -hmm. or should I be running away from a bear? You know, am I, am I in a state of stress and I need to be freaked out? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, and that's great. So by yeah. following that physical body, you're working right with the more like ancient, ancient structures of the brain and telling them, Hey, it's okay. Um, now you can, you can calm down and then you can help, helps you kind of process through whatever the anxiety in your head has attached to. Alex and I joke about this a lot. We might, if you have a physical thing going on, like maybe you have um, some, you really need some extra liver support or a gut infection that can cause um, a sensation of anxiety in the body. And then your brain is like, I must be anxious uh, about something. I'm going to attach it to that conversation I just had with my friend. Mm -hmm. She must be mad at me mm -hmm. <laughs> when really it's all like, physical thing. I love that. Thank you for pointing that out. There is such a good information there specifically around the, the mind and the body. They work so interconnectedly. And sometimes we put too much of our thoughts on top of the fact that it's just a physiological thing. And it is potentially something that we can change just through deep breathing. So I think, you know, I use the word just you know, just breathe. And, and while just minimizes things, I think breathing cannot be minimized. And it's so key. So I'm really, really grateful that you brought that one up. Thank you, Megan. And thank you for sharing that. So I want to move a little towards uh, what Alex was talking about in her why was around pain and the fit mamas know. And uh, it, I, you know, I wrote a lot about it in my book around my own personal journey with pain. Mine specifically was with back pain, but learning a lot of, about the deep inner core and pelvic health, you know, I'm really curious, Alex about your journey through pain and now being a pain doctor and a chronic pain specialist, you know, what is your hope and goal and desire and direction with your chronic pain patients and yourself, I suppose, in the same, or where are you at with your pain? Oh, that's funny that you asked that because <laughs> that is a whole, uh, <laughs> this is a whole can of worms here, but I will try to keep it somewhat brief, but, um, yeah. So my, in my personal journey, um, it does have a happy ending, I think. Um, so my pain is, I would say 96%, um, under control most of the time. Great. Um, at this point. And 
I did it, you know, this completely backward sort of way where I went full, like, crunchy, natural. Mm -hmm. I've always had an affinity for, um, like, herbal medicine and Mm -hmm. medicinal teas and things like that because that's what I grew up with. Mm -hmm. My, um, like, my great-grandma, I remember her, like, making us all these teas and stuff when we were sick. So Mm -hmm. I went from that backwards and and through a lot of like things that didn't work. And, um, later I kind of figured out why that was, but, um, then I, as I went, I actually reintroduced more of conventional medicine into my care because for a long time I felt so resentful because I was just like, Oh my gosh, I just feel so horrible all the time. And like, no, everyone would just be like, you're so young. There's nothing wrong with you. Mm. Like, And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm not crazy, you know, Mm -hmm. but I was like, am I, am I, you know, and Mm -hmm. you're then that's a whole nother (laughs) uh, ball of wax. Um, And so after being in medicine and understanding being a doctor is really challenging, like emotionally, physically. um, And I think we're expected to, you know, perform in certain ways for hospitals you know, making money and running because they have to do that in order to stay open. But also it's just a lot of work and everyone's like, I mean, talk about hormonal clips. Like everyone in the hospital is just a walking mess of Mm. caffeine and um, not sleeping ever and stress. Um, And so like understanding that, I, I felt like I saw the other side of the coin and I'm like, okay, there's good people here. They're all trying hard and Mm -hmm. there's really cool stuff that, um, modern medicine has to offer. And once I started embracing that, the combination of everything and the work that Megan and I were doing, it just took off. Um, and so I would say over the last four ish years, um, things have been really, really good. Um, I would say, Um, I've had occasional flares, like when I did IVF, I felt crummy just all over, um, Mm -hmm. and it certainly set off my pain, but you know, on, on this note of stressors, um, and reasons to have stress, um, I like to explain about chronic pain that, um, acute pain, so sharp pain that you have with injury is a symptom of something. Mm -hmm. Chronic pain is an actual disease process that disease process in and of itself. Um, what that means then is that it's a dysfunction of the messaging system within the brain and the spinal cord. And, um, instead of using pain as a, a, Hey, notice this, that's going on. Like, Ooh, I just touched the curling iron with my finger. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, and your brain says, withdraw your hand, right. And you move your hand and you go take care of the burn and it prompts you to do that. And so it is protective in a way when you have chronic pain, that means that signal has gotten amplified and the, um, kind of the brakes have come off that system. Mm -hmm. And now it's just shooting signals without cause over and over because, there's so much circuitry within the central nervous system Mm -hmm. that can make things, um, it's kind of like a dial on, um, your like car radio. Mm -hmm. You can either turn it down or turn it up. So a turning down example is if you have chronic back pain and you're dealing with that and you're kind of going along with it, but then you stub your toe really hard on a coffee table, your brain down regulates the um, signal from your chronic back pain because your brain says, okay, I know about that danger. We've been cool with it. So um, right now my toe feels like it's about to pull off, right? Because it's so horrible. Um, and so that that system is, is meant to turn things down. But in chronic pain, um, I liken it to someone tries to open a car door and the alarm, car alarm goes off. And then no one ever turns that car alarm off. It just keeps going and going and going. Um, And that ends up being um, basically the root problem with chronic pain. And then also kind of explains why chronic pain is such a stressor in the body. It's basically 
your main messaging system taking over one pathway and rebuilding those neurons and those connections and those um, messaging systems over and over and over and over. And our brains are incredibly um, plastic. They are able to change. I'm reading this book, Mind to Matter. Um, Megan and I were just talking about it this morning. It's by a guy named Dawson Church. And I just started it. So, um, but I, the stuff that he introduces in terms of the science being done, like having people meditate for eight weeks and then doing an MRI before they do that and a functional MRI after um, they do the meditation and there's huge volume changes. Like there's um, a 22% increase um, in people who meditate regularly um, in this area of the brain that processes emotional cues. Mm -hmm. So it's your ability to, um, instead of when your coworker comes at you with an attitude, (laughs) instead of flipping and being like, Oh my gosh, how could she do that? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and getting emotionally invested in that, it gives your brain is that much more capable of saying, okay, just one second. This is her problem. Like I don't need to get swept up in it. And you can see that little bit of separation. And that is that emotional processing capability that we really want to build. And so, you know, the other piece of why I think I've gotten so much better with my pain has been all this work with meditation, deep breathing, and actually processing old stored emotions and beliefs and, you know, all of these toxic thought patterns that we tend to get into that we don't even notice. Um, Just the other day I was standing in my kitchen and I had worked like, I think a 16, 17 hour shift because I was on call. I came home and I was just eating like heated up chicken that I had made and peas out of bag. And I was in my head, I was going through this whole process of like, oh, you suck. Like you can't make a meal for yourself, blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, actually, let me just like flip the script for a second and just say like, I'm so grateful that I went out of my way this weekend to make myself chicken. And I really like it. <laughs> like I, I did it good. I did it the way I liked. And I'm can actually like just be grateful for that. I love the peas that I, I love sugar snap peas in summertime. And I just like, once I pointed that out, I caught myself thinking that. And once I caught myself thinking that, that emotional processing, I just was able to say like, yeah, there's a part of me that's a little bit still the little kid that wants to like do everything perfect. <laughs> but now I'm growing up into the person that understands that that will never happen. Mm-hmm. And that's perfectly okay. And I don't need to keep beating myself up over that over and over and over again. Mm, Alex, well said. I love that. That's beautiful. That's really actually just such a beautiful message overall. So thank you very much for sharing. Now you two, I mean, I I cannot tell you enough how that resonates with me, Alex, in terms of my chronic pain. Once I realized it was just something that I was deciding to continue, it was light bulb moments, right? And, And when I say deciding to continue, it didn't mean purposefully. It just meant I had done it so many times over, putting my baby into her crib, bending in a way that I had no choice, that I just had to bend even through the pain. And then over a while, the pain was only the thing I could remember all day and night. And I think it's that plasticity of our brain that is changed through behaviors like meditation and breathing. And I'm so glad to hear that from you. And, you know, the both of you are very inspirational. And the stuff that you guys share in your online world, uh, which is where I found you through one of my sisters, which is great. And I'm so grateful to her. And the thing is, is that one thing I like about what you guys share across your platforms and in your programs is really achievable steps. And that's what we like to break it down here on Fit Mama is how can I do something today or how can I 
change the way I look at things. And you guys do a really great job of that by making really achievable steps, such as the elixirs that I was sharing on social media and in the Fit Mama Facebook group, because these elixirs that you guys have pertain to the different phases of our cycle. So it's broken down in four weeks. And for those of you who have not downloaded it, the link is going to be available in the show notes from Alex and Megan and their Zesty Ginger site. You can go there anytime. So all those links will be available. And I just want to hear sort of as a, as a closing from you two, um, you know, what are your three key tips? And if someone was to be either feeling chronic pain or just stuck in a pattern of woe is me having emotional trauma turned into physical pain, which was much of my case. Um, and then, or someone who's having a dopamine serotonin imbalance and they don't have the functional test. They don't know what to do. You know, what three key tips, maybe Megan, you can start with the first two and Alex, you can finish up with the last one. Um, or however you guys want to do it. Um, I would say one of the biggest changes that women can make to just take their health into their hands this is a bigger step. This is not kind of, I, I, we love small action items, so I'll have my next one be that. But this is a little bit a broader topic, but very, very important. So we do not believe in any one specific prescribed diet, but we do think everybody needs to customize their own. And so we, one of the first things we do with all the ladies we work with is we get them to do an elimination diet, removing all the all the main um, common known allergens and triggers and food sensitivities and then slowly putting them back in. Mm. Because again, we want everyone to really look into the, the mental emotional side of things and the underlying causes of things and the stress factor. And our whole goal is literally to get people um, more t- spending more time in the parasympathetic than the sympathetic. So getting out wow. of fight or flight, spending more time in rest and digest. But as my more mentor said, you could be lying on a beach in Hawaii with no problems in the world. But if you have some chronic underlying concern, such as you're eating something daily that your food thinks is an invader and it's attacking it, or mm-hmm. you have a hormonal imbalance or you have bacterial overgrowth, then your body's going to be in a state of stress. So we just really want women to stop following the plan, like stop following a prescribed plan and find what customize and find what works for them. Mm-hmm. That's our biggest, I'd say, number one action step. The so next good. thing is yeah. to be aware of your cycle. Mm-hmm. Be aware of where you are in your cycle, um, download an app so you know, and use that as your guideline. So we use that as a way of not getting overwhelmed because there's so many different things you can do, you said, right? So many mm-hmm. different elixirs, so many different daily detox tools. These are all things we love to talk about, mm-hmm. we share on Instagram. But if you went to our page and were new to this, you'd be like, I can't do all this crazy mm-hmm. stuff. Or I'm so exhausted. Like we say, pick one. So in the first half of your cycle, pick one thing to lower inflammation. Second half of your cycle, pick one thing um, to help support detoxification. So for me, I'm I'm loving my dry skin brush. That's what I would pick for detoxification. And for inflammation, I would pick an elixir because those are two really simple things. So for example, I just mix up cranberry concentrate, a half a lemon, liquid chlorophyll and water. And that's my daily go-to. I'm going to support my body and give it the nutrients it needs. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Love that. Love that. Thank you. And Alex, how about you? You Could give us the last one or a last two if you have them? Yes. I'm going to do last two only because I have the perfect segue. Actually, I made up an elixir this morning. Um, and so I don't even think Megan, I actually, I know Megan hasn't even heard about this, (laughs) Uh, but we have an elixir called the transition elixir. So as you're going along your cycle, um, there's certain transition points, right? And one of them is the point where you're finishing up a cycle. So let's say you have the standard 28 day cycle, day 27, 28 are the last few days of your last cycle. And then day one and day two are the first days of the next one. And I like to make for myself a transition elixir for that point. And uh, we share that on our, you know, in, Instagram and I think it was our newsletter. Um, we send out that kind of stuff all the time. Um, just cause I kind of like 
make it up and <laughs> we, we plan it out. But, um, the, 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 I like supporting both the detoxing aspect and the inflammatory aspect just because I feel like those couple days are so important for smoothly making the transition out because most people, that's where things really go wrong. Those mm-hmm. are the days where they're tearful and craving all sorts of like salt and sugar and, um, you know, feeling anxious, starting to get really spotting, um, getting really bad hormonal headaches, acne, all of that stuff. And so being able to make that transition calmly, uh, I think goes a really long way. So, um, I like mixing liquid chlor. We love liquid chlorophyll. So we use it a lot, but liquid chlorophyll for the detox, so, uh, detox piece. And then I really like tart cherry concentrate mm. and it makes this like beautiful, really like dark dr- elixir. So I usually do, um, maybe about a half a tablespoon or a tablespoon of liquid chlorophyll and then maybe a tablespoon or two of the tart cherry juice and then fill the rest of the glass up with water. Um, Mm. and then, and, and the new twist that I made (laughs) had today was I recently bought mango juice to play around with and we, we never really drink juices, um, because a lot, I think all of us know they're fairly high in sugar, but we really like using, um, like, uh, juice concentrates as a way to provide a a jolt of nutrients without that. Um, so we kind of use it as a supplement. Mm. And so, um, I got mango juice because it is so high in all of these antioxidants. Mm. And so I did, um, about a tablespoon of liquid chlorophyll. And then I did about, um, one quarter mango juice, Um, and then the rest of the, you know, uh, three quarters water and it's super tasty and it's just, Mm. that's where I am in my cycle. And it's just, um, it's so nourishing. It also is kind of nice with, um, that little bit of sugar at this point in the cycle, our energy tends to be low and we love honoring that and not pushing yourself. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's sometimes nice to get a little bit of that, um, blood sugar stabilizing effect at the same time that you're supporting inflammation and all of those other good processes. Wow. So yes. hopefully that makes sense. And it's Love super that. tasty. So we like to make these, you know, nice to drink because most of us don't drink like you know, pop or hopefully yeah. or, and stuff like that. So um, it's nice to have things that you enjoy drinking, but also know are good for you. And they're such it cause you're going to get water anyways. It's not too much of a hassle to, um, you know, pour a couple things in there and then just enjoy it for an hour after that. Love and that. I probably talk, I think I talked too long, so I'll, I'll wrap it up <laughs> with the one. Okay. That's awesome. Well, that was a very good tip and doing those, uh, juice as a supplement. I love that. And I can definitely say personally, since my sister Crystal introduced me to your guide, which I downloaded and then proceeded to weekly get a new supplement that I needed for that week, whether I was mixing in the turmeric concentrate or the milk thistle or the chlorophyll one, you know, they were surprisingly delicious and kind of like, yeah, I I mean, I don't drink juice really, but seeing juice as a supplement, I like that. Um, And I really think that's a great way of looking at it. It's just a great way to start your day off too. And I think that's what I really, really like about it. I'm all about creating habits and creating those habits that stick day after day. And so pairing them with something that you're already doing is how I like to look at them. So if you're having an elixir every morning on an empty stomach and you're starting your day and it's lemon and it's this or whatever, and it feels really nourishing and you hydrated, well, then you're more likely to pair that with your morning workout or pair that with your morning walk or eating a really nourishing breakfast and not feeling like you're on a diet or some kind of plan, but you're just honoring you. And I love that you said that word, Alex, and, uh, that that was just beautiful. So thank you. And any last parting words from either of you, you guys are a wealth of wisdom. Everybody's going to be able to find you on social, find you on your website and be able to work with you and anything else to add before we close up here. 
my parting words, this is Megan, would be to find your tribe and find mm. your team. Mm. Start gathering all those holistic practitioners so that when you get into that deep down spot, you know, when you get hit with the next life stressor, or if it's just neighbors and friends and people, but there are a lot of people out there going through the same thing as you. And just knowing that and just having those people around you can change totally make or break uh, where your where your head goes and then how your body ends up reacting. Oh, I could not agree more. That is such a good point. And that leads right into uh, Alex's pain stuff too. I know for me, when I found out, you know, I wasn't crazy as she said with pain and it was like, there's something going on here. And yes, maybe I had some part in creating it, but I'm not crazy. And it really feels good to know that other people can help you along the journey. So that's a great tip and find your tribe, enjoy and can connect with them. That's what I love about social media. We can all connect and feel really connected by learning about these great elixirs and daily habits that keep us all inspired because it is sometimes it feels like, oh, to do another thing. But you go and you see Alex's Instagram or Megan's Instagram story and you go, whoa, I can do it because she's doing it. So there's that power in that tribe too. I love it. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you for the work that you do for so many. And thank you for being here on the Fit Mama podcast. Uh, Thanks so much for having us. Well, now you can see why I really wanted to introduce you to this pair, because they have a wealth of knowledge. They really know what they're talking about. And I think one of the things that I love most is that they have this real strong belief in functional lab work. It's not enough just to guess that you may or may not have hormone imbalances. I mean, there is so much going on inside your body. You can't possibly know exactly what it is. So they are into testing and that is a huge piece because if you don't test, you don't really know what's going on. So maybe you go to the doctor and they put you on a pill and then maybe you go and see them again in a month and it doesn't work or it doesn't feel right and they need to change the dose and they, you know, things will change over and over and you're not really getting the results you want because you have no idea what's going on. So if you want to find out more from these two, absolutely get yourself over to zestyginger.com. If you time it right, you can just join their next Healthy Hormones group program, which is happening starting September 25th. And the beautiful thing about this is that you actually get lab kits and you send them away. So you are not only getting coaching from them, you are doing functional lab testing as well. And they will help read the tests. They will give you things that you can do, and they're going to be taking you through the whole program. So it's pretty awesome. And the timing is right. So if this speaks to you and you have had issues with hormones, PCOS, endometriosis, severe fatigue, if you're having resistance to weight loss and it just won't budge, if you're having adult acne or cramps and PMS, you do not need to deal with this fit mama. So get yourself over to the Zesty Ginger site and I'm going to be posting a direct link to their healthy hormones group and you can go to that just by clicking it in the show notes. So feel free to reach out to them and like I said on Instagram, they're Zesty underscore Ginger and they are fun to follow. They have great information and these two are really doing incredible stuff for so many people around the globe and I'm so, so grateful to them that they were here with us today on the Fit Mama podcast and I absolutely am so grateful that you were here to listen to us have a great chat. So thanks again for being here. Have a great day, Fit Mama. Namaste.